you have heard me talk about all the amazing free resources that Jason Pritchard has at his disposal that he gives to you for free. But I don't think you really appreciate all this free stuff. So I've asked him to pull up two things. We're going to talk about this 10 page guide, how to get started. And we're going to show the max allowable offer spreadsheet. Uh, Jason, I still can't believe you give this stuff for free. Let's show them what it is because people need to go download it today while it's still free. What do you got? Yeah, guys. So, so the easiest way to get this is um, a, we built out a, a website to just try to share as much of the information that we have. So if you guys go to jasonpritchard.com, you can click on, I'm going to share my screen really quick so you guys can see where to go. The homepage looks like this. And if you click on this documents and resources tab right here, it's going to open up some links to some really cool tools and, and resources that my team use on a day-to-day -day basis. The first one that I like to just give to everybody that's interested in getting started in real estate and just trying to figure out, you know, which way to go and, and, and like, how do you do the investing the way that I do it is this 10 page guide right here. So it's a step-by-step -step guide to get started in real estate investing. And for me, we've talked about this Uber. I believe that real estate investing, the way that I do it, it's a linear process, meaning you have to start with step one before you can go to step two or three. And the biggest issue that I see with new investors is that they like to jump from one step to another, right? They want to learn how to raise money. And then another day they want to learn how to do Burr. And then the next day they want to learn subject two. And then the next day they want to learn how to find off-market deals. And they trick themselves into thinking that they're making progress because they're doing all this self-education. But in reality, the way that I suggest that you start is you start with how to find a good deal. Because if you can figure out how to run numbers and identify what a good deal is, and then just focus all your time and energy on doing that. Then you can go find the money. Then we can go find the contractors and then we can go do that. So this is literally, yeah, well, let, a business. let me just, let me poke at that a little bit. So, yeah. you know, obviously I have a course it's called how to get started one rental at a time. It's three ninety nine. you know, whatever, whatever, but that that's exactly, that's how it starts. How do you find a good deal? And, and, yep. Unfortunately, the other thing I believe, and I don't know if you believe this or not, so we're going to find out. I believe real estate investing is a skill. And being a skill, it means all of us could learn or be better. It's not a naturally born gift. You weren't born a real estate. I agree, I agree 100%. All of this oh. stuff is learned, a learned skill over time. And then there's subsets to all of those skills with each one of these categories, right? Like you need to have good sales and negotiation skills when it comes to talking to sellers, right? You need to have somewhat of an analytical background when you're coming to tracking your marketing, doing all, and these are things that are learned over time, guys. I didn't just come into this in 2014, knowing how to do all of this stuff. I had to practice and through repetition and just staying consistent, you learn these things over time. And I agree hundred percent. It's a skill. It's not a uh, you know, just a natural talent that, you know, people are born with. These are things that you can learn if you put the time and effort into it. Folks. And again, it all starts with finding a good deal. How do you do that? You know, there might be lots of ways. What I talk about is get a buy box, look at your buy box for 90 days, track everything going on, become the expert in your buy box. At the end of that, you will build confidence in yourself through repetition. You'll be able to articulate the variables that make that buy box go. And once you know average, the world's your oyster. Once you know average, you can find that you can write great offers. So for me, that's where it starts and stops. And and put, most people don't like to do it, Jason, because it's boring. Yeah. It's repetitive. Yep. yep. It's not exciting. I'm like, gosh, you just don't get it. Yeah. And the and buy box and, and understanding your buy boxes is, is the foundation to this. That's even step one A to what I'm going to talk about here with my step one. Because if you don't understand what your buy box is, nothing that I'm talking about in step one for finding a deal is really going to matter because you really have to get a target understanding of you know, what neighborhood are we going to be buying in? What price point are we going to be buying in? All of those things first, right? And then we can figure out how to turn your marketing on. So for me, step one for me understands this fundamental thing, okay? For, for me to find off-market deals consistently and predictably over a long period of time, the first thing that we need to know is that we're not going to be talking to sellers where selling for the highest possible price is their number one priority, right? That's 90 to 95% of the sellers that are listing on MLS, right? They want to put it on the market. They want to get max value for the house. I don't blame them for that. That might be what I would do. And you would probably do with most yeah. of our properties, right? Correct. But we're Absolutely. not really targeting those sellers in our marketing with us. We're targeting the sellers that for one reason or another, 
selling for maximum value is it's it's a priority, but it's not top of the list, right? So usually we see eight to 10 circumstances over and over and over and over again with the sellers that my team and I speak to on a regular basis. And you can see them listed over here in bullet points on the right-hand column of my screen. So it's people that are inheriting unwanted houses. It's people that have properties with physical distress, code enforcement issues. They're going through eviction. They're tax delinquent. They had, you know, a property where one of the owners on title died. You can insert, you know, these circumstances and everything. And that's the avatar of the seller that we are then going to be marketing to. And whether you realize it or not, all of this information is a matter of public record. Some of this information is easier to find than others, but all of these things are just floating around there, right? Mm -hmm. There's websites like Property Radar and PropStream that aggregate this data for you. You can go directly to the courts or the county departments and pull some of these lists, but we've got to understand first where we get that information from create marketing campaigns around these different things, and then start actively engaging those sellers. So that to me is getting your marketing set up, getting leads coming in from those sellers, and then having a process for how we intake that lead, how we qualify that lead, how we run numbers on that deal, and then we go and make an offer, right? So step one is get your marketing set up. Step two, we get leads coming in. Step three, we have to have a process to talk to those leads can like determine what's qualified, what's not qualified. And then we push them through our, uh, our, our, the analysis side and the underwriting side of the business and come up with an offer to, to talk to them. I love it. Yeah. Again, this is just, it's all, like you said, in the opening, it's linear. Don't rush it. Don't skip ahead. Don't play hopscotch. Just, just one step at a time. Yeah. And then once you guys, this is the other tool that we talked about and teased at the beginning of it. Once you guys get to the point where you got a few leads in your system and now you're ready to underwrite those deals, that's another area where I see a lot of new investors freeze up, right? They don't know how to run comps. They don't know how, especially how to run rehabs, right? They don't understand what things cost. And this calculator, even to this day, guys, we flip probably close to 400 houses at this point. This is the calculator that we use to create a baseline offer price to make sure that the sellers and I are, have the same expectations as far as what our numbers are going to be. And so just really quickly, um, you know, this is something that my team uses every single day. And we very first just start at the beginning. And step number one is understanding what the property sells for. So you need to get good at running comps, right? So for us, our team has MLS access. If you don't have MLS access, you need to partner with a realtor that can help you run and understand those numbers. And then what I suggest that you do is once you partner with one of those agents in your market to kind of understand what those comps are, you should subscribe to a site like Property Radar or PropStream so you have access to some of this information and that way you can start running comps on your own. One, because I don't think you want to like exhaust your realtor partner by having them comp out all these deals that aren't going to make sense because eventually they're not going to return your phone calls if you don't ever pull the trigger on anything. And two, for the sake of building the skills like we talked about at the beginning, you guys just have to learn and understand how to comp some of these properties out. And exactly. MLS for me is number one, but uh, we still use property radar and prop streams in some of these markets that don't. And you're going to get really close with those numbers too. So I think you do that. And once you have your... Once you have your after repair value, you put whatever that price per square foot on the resale value is here in this box. And then you put right. the square footage for the property there in this box. And then the spreadsheet automatically calculates everything that everything else that you need as long once you have the information from the property on the seller. So it really does make it very easy for you to, to come up with a max offer at the end and, and run, run through and underwrite a deal in you know, 15, 20 minutes. Let's pull up the spreadsheet one more time because I just want to go through. I'll go through each row, kind of my understanding of it, um, just so people realize. So yep. we're going to first start in the rehab calculator part. Uh, so again, uh, the general rehab cost. That's probably a is that a calculated number or what is that? Yeah. So so you can see this was an uh, an example of of a property that we ran. I just hadn't pl unplugged the numbers, so we actually have real numbers oh. in here. So this this house we were selling at. 200 bucks a square foot. That was the resale price. So it automatically mm -hmm. calculates our after repair value of just over 400,000 on this property, right? So yep. this subject property we're looking at had an ARV of 406. Okay. We had a property square foot of 2033. So that house was 2033 square feet. And the property takes 
the calculator takes this square footage and multiplies that by $30 a square foot to get our general rehab cost. Okay. Yep. So our general rehab on a typical house that is around the median price point will give us a kitchen. It will give us two bathrooms. It'll give us flooring, interior and exterior paint, and then some miscellaneous fixtures and finish work. It sure. doesn't give us our big ticket items, our MEPs, like our roof, our AC, electrical panel, all of those are additional add-ons, right? Which yep. you can see as we go down. But so, all you do so is plug again, that in and it gives us that number. So again, you, you're you using 30 bucks. 30 because bucks for our market. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that's the key, right? It's your that's market. That's what you works in it. our market, guys. So again, if you're in a more expensive market, all you need to do is just tweak this formula and take it from 30 to 40 or 40 to or whatever applies Whatever, yeah. towards your market. So the way that you get that information is talking to other flippers, talking to agents that work with flippers to get a sense of all of us know and understand or should have some sense of what are we paying per square foot to rehab a property. And so $30 a square foot is what's working in, in my market right now. And then you have the other big items because you're really, they are yes, no questions, right? Are you going to replace the roof? Yes or no? So yes, no, correct. great. Zero. If yep. you flip it to yes, what happens? If you flip it to yes, then, uh, so it says needs to be replaced. If you flip it to yes, actually, that should, that number should automatically calculate there. So that number should pop up. Um, let's see what happens here. 1500 bucks. I don't know why that's not working. Sorry guys. Existing so basically ducting, there yeah. is a number behind it. Yeah. Right? So the one that's on my calculator, this is one from my computer. So the formulas may be screwed up because we're doing it, but the one that's on the website, all of these things will pop up. So if you flip yeah. these things to yes, then it'll automatically add the yeah. numbers Give you a for rough all of those estimate. things. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So all of those it, things are already pretty plugged in. Yeah. And, then, and again, you've got the big items, roof, windows, a, uh, HVAC, electrical, water heater, yeah. Uh, and then you've got a miscellaneous thing down at the bottom because there's always kickers that pop up. Guys. Like so there's house, always surprises. Rear yeah. Fences. So if you if you feel like you need fencing or if you feel like there's a big trash haul or if you feel like there's other things, you can put that in there. So for this particular house, we had seventy four thousand dollars in total rehab costs that we budgeted for this particular property. So two thousand okay. square foot house, just about seventy four hundred bucks. There was no roof, there was no windows needed. This was general rehab an AC, a uh, water heater, and then $1,500 in additional miscellaneous stuff. So okay. think about that. So windows were good. Roof was good on this house. Electrical was good on this house. We needed to do a new AC with ducting, full general rehab, about $75,000 for, for that house. And it and also then, calculates all of our additional costs down here. I know perfect. we'll get to it, but that's going to be the next section. Yeah. Yeah, go for it. I mean, that's that's the next thing. I just want to put this put this thing to, together. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So we've got our commissions, our closing costs on the buy and the sell. We've got interest to our hard money lender. We've got all of those things added into this, though. It, it's calculating 49000 in a total, total project cost when you add all of those things up. And that's another thing that people severely underestimate when you're borrowing yeah. money, when yeah. you're trying to understand what the true holding costs of these things are, your, your insurance, your maintenance, your utilities, all of those things add up guys. And so a lot of times I see with new investors, we severely underestimate the costs associated with doing these outside of our rehab budget. So we've got to be careful with that. And um, on this one, it's budgeting a $49,000 rehab. You can change this percentage to whatever number you want. This is, this is set at 12%. If we're moving it up and we want to do 15%, like we talked about in our other video, you can, you can tweak it up. That number can be fluid. You just have to, you just have to go in there and change it. And so it gives us on a $400,000 house that needs all of this work, a max allowable offer of $234,000. So you can you see go. where we need to be at as far as the price point goes. And so, like we said, going back to our process, once that lead comes in, we run comps, we put all our information in, it gives us our max offer. And with off market properties, we need to be operating with a sense of urgency. And that's the thing. When somebody calls in, we've got to be moving very, very, we don't have days or weeks to get back to the seller. For us, we want to be getting an answer back to the seller within 24 hours because we yep. know a, in a normal sales process, there's never going to be more sense of urgency than when that seller first calls in. Their level of attention and their Willingness to hear one of these offers is never going to be higher than when they first reach out to the team. So the longer that we wait to get back to them with that offer, the more likelihood that somebody else is going to go in there and slide an offer in, or they just kind of move on and, and, and do their own thing. And so we've got to get back to them right away. And this process makes it very quick and easy in order to do that.
Folks, this is just a taste, and I would argue a very small taste of stuff that Jason Pritchard gives away for free. Jason, where can they find this stuff? JasonPritchard.com, guys. This is all free on my website. All you have to do is, is sign up um, and uh, go to the Documents and Resources tab. We have both of these documents that we talked about, along with copies of our contract that we use. Our scripts are up there, examples of our private lending packets. So if you need to raise money, I mean, every single tool, there's a whole toolkit up there to get you started. These are the things that we use in our business every day. And hopefully it provides some value to uh, to the audience and the people that jump on. Folks, at the end of the day, I have a very strong suspicion that this won't be free forever. So go get it now. Jason, thank you so much, bud. Thank you.